Hello everyone, welcome back to another PAL World video. Today I have 8 tips for beginner players and all of these will help you get the most out of your time in game. From exploring, leveling, catching PALs and base building, I've tried to cover everything I can, so let's jump into it. When you slide down hills, you pick up a massive speed boost. Then by jumping and using your glider, you can carry a lot more momentum over and travel really far. The map doesn't show you where things are, so don't forget to place down markers on the map of points of interest, like the Black Market Vendor, or Ore. Jumping while climbing will make you climb faster. Torches generate enough heat to ward off cold. You can use some pals as a glider, it's a good way to get around fast as well. Get a flying mount as soon as possible, like Nightwing at level 15, you can build its harness and it's worth it and will change your game completely as you can travel a lot further and quicker. When running out of stamina on a flying pal over water, your pal does not sink into the water so it will just simply hover. Deer and Wolves proved to be some of the fastest early game mounts, offering agility and speed. Taking the glider out repeatedly allows you to glide just a little bit further. If you are running out of stamina while swimming, get on a mount and it will start using their stamina bar instead. Build a feed bag early on so pals will automatically feed themselves when hungry. Build a grappling gun as soon as you can and you can get around a lot quicker. Don't forget you can carry two of these at the same time and you can switch them when the other one is loading. You can also use the grappling hook to move around while over encumbered. I use this a lot when moving my ore from my second base to my main one, or if I'm simply resource gathering. Fast travel points will show up on your top compass and will tell you exactly how far away they are, but only within 300 meters. Beaches and coastlines are a great resource of pal balls and random loot chests. One hundred cooked berries are a thousand dollars at the merchant. A great easy way to make money very early in the game if you're low on cash. Heat and cold play a big part in exploration, so crafting a heat resistant and cold resistant armor as early as possible is something you should do. Equipping one cold and one heat resistant piece of clothing will give you resistance for most weathers as well. If you get a wanted level, you can simply respawn to get rid of it. Find a black market vendor where you can buy some hard to get pals with your cash. If you don't like the, what the vendor sells, leave the area and return and his inventory will refresh. Stunning pals with the shock baton can increase your chance of catching them. Catching pals while they sleep can be a lot easier than when they're awake. Be on the lookout for skill fruits, they are used to teach your pals new abilities. They are found on skill trees and at vendors sometimes as well.
Increase your pal stats at a statue. Also increase your capture rate here as well. Build the PAL condenser when you can to combine PALs of the same type to make one of them very strong. It uses up PALs that you have spare. Revive fallen pals by placing them in the pal box. It usually takes 10 minutes to bring them back to life. Alternatively, at night you can sleep and it will revive your pals instantly. One of the best ways to level up in game early is to catch 10 of each type of pal. You will get XP exponentially for each one you catch. Exploit weak spots on pals when you fight them to increase damage when striking them. The face or the head is a common weak spot. Wild eggs may not be worth the inventory space due to the lengthy hatching time, and you don't really get too much good stuff in them, but if you find huge eggs, they're worth the effort, as they usually contain something good in them. Pay attention to traits and worker stats of pals. Negative traits can have a significant impact on them. When breeding pals, you should pick pals that have good traits so they are inherited instead of the bad ones. Pal cages and bandit camps retain the same pals indefinitely, rescue them for extra captures and XP. Search caves for boss versions of pals, which have better stats than regular ones, and you can run away and return to get new ones to spawn. Different PAL spheres give different results. The higher the quality, the more chance of capturing a PAL, but the harder it is to make those spheres, so use them wisely. Sometimes it's a lot easier to throw 50 low level spheres at a PAL than a couple of the much higher level ones, simply because they're quicker to make. You can catch humans and traders and have them fight for you. Once boss pals are defeated, their regular variants spawn more frequently in the overworld. Lucky pals, or the shiny ones, have an audible sound on them. If you hear the music around, that means there's one nearby. Throwing a pal sphere at a pal's back increases the capture chance. Lucky pals can have traits that non-lucky pals can't have, and have an increased chance of legendary traits, which is great for breeding. Kill high level enemies with low level pals in your team to get them tons of XP. Here these level 3 pals get over 1 million XP for defeating this high level enemy. One of the first things that you should be focusing on is trying to get to level 21 and unlocking the musket, and that's because it's the most powerful weapon mid game. Don't forget you can dodge enemy attacks. Anyone who's struggling with combat is probably not making use of it.
Focus on improving stamina and carry weight rather than damage stat. Your weapons and pals will be your primary source of damage. Activate waypoints for tech points. You can recall and redeploy pals strategically during enemy attacks. Craft key items for your friends and they can use them without learning the tech themselves. Make sure to use cover a lot more to block attacks. Take advantage of enemy weakness types, for example if you fight an ice pal, use a fire one against them as that's what they're weak against. Shields add an extra layer of protection to your health so make sure you get one as soon as you can. Discover the green statues across the map called Liftmonk Effigies. Capturing their essence is beneficial, you can use this to increase your character's capture rate percentage. Press R or Y slash RB on Xbox to quickly stack items from your inventory to your chest. You can also sort or move an entire chest content to your inventory. If you have the materials, you can also repair all of your gear at once at the repair bench. Medicine and ammo take forever to craft, but there is a village that sells them called Fisherman's Point at the bottom left of the map, south of the Volcano Mountain. Some pals drop rare stones that sell at the merchant for good prices, so you can farm those pals for money. If you do decide to craft ammo, go to the desert where Anubis is, or the one on the far right of the map. Ammo spawns on the ground and the suicidal dodo birds will drop lots of gunpowder. When crafting ammo, Rebunny is your best option because its passive allows you to produce ammo quicker at the workbench. Food can spoil when left out, it has a timer for when it goes bad. A small tip for food that spoils, if you put it in your inventory then back, the timer will reset. If you don't want your food to spoil then you will need to build a cooler and the food will stay fresh inside. It can look cool to build in a forest, but don't build foundations on trees or rocks. Your pals will bug and start hitting invisible trees. Don't forget you can build outside of your camp as well. The camp is the only place you can put down things like manufacturing and breeding pens, but structures, furniture and workbenches and most other things can be built outside of your base. But they will start to deteriorate in a couple of hours unless you change your world setting to zero for deterioration which I personally think is a good decision so you can build a lot more places. Be cautious with wood structures as wood can burn down rapidly. Avoid placing important items in wooden houses. Building your base next to ore deposits from the start will save you a lot of hassle later in the game as you need to make so much ingots. Consider building your base out of stone as a precaution against potential raids with fire related threats. This decision can prevent fire damage and safeguard your base. If you're building a structure for your pals to sleep in, make sure you make it three high, as some pals are too big to fit inside any of the structures. Also consider a defensive wall to help against raids. 
Improve the focus of your working pals by lifting and throw them directly at the building they are meant to work on. This method typically prevents distractions, especially useful for tasks like managing cooler box or ensuring your mining and lumbering pals stay committed to their tasks. There is no level 3 farming pal because all pals with farming work suitability simply drop the item that they have, so sheep will drop wool and cows will drop milk and bees will drop honey. Hell Zephyrs are a pal with transportation only, making them good at ensuring all the stuff lying around your camp is picked off the ground. Other pals with transportation and another trait will get stuck doing something else and forget about picking all the stuff up. When making any base, especially an ore farm, don't place too many berry patches because pals love to make them and they will often get stuck in a cycle of simply making them. Planting doesn't consume seeds, seeds are only required to build the structure in the first place. Be careful where you put a structure on an ore farm. The ore spawns are fixed and building structures over them will prevent them from respawning. Make sure there is space for your benches as pals can't always reach them. Don't place any object under stairs as it can make them not work properly for pals. Same for roofs over stairs, only if you need pals to climb up them of course. Get Vixate early in the game and build a ranch. It will spawn lots of regular spheres for you to use, arrows and cash. You can assign humans to your base and they are good for protecting it from pal attacks. You can move your base by disassembling it but it warns you that certain things will be disassembled. That mainly means anything in the PAL category, all of the build menu, electric furnaces and assembly lines, which is all the hardest stuff to build. So what you must do is disassemble them first and simply put the materials in a storage box. When moving your base, it's best to wait until you have two of them available, because you can build your new one and keep the old one so you can teleport between the two to transfer all your stuff. Then you can start rebuilding your assembly lines and other stuff from the items you've transferred from your old base. So there we have it then guys, 80 amazing tips for beginners, and if you're not a beginner, maybe then there was one or two you didn't know and found the video helpful. If you did, like and subscribe for more Palworld, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.